Well, we derived the differential equation for a very simple genetic circuit where we just have one regulator and one gene. So here I have copied down our differential equation for a protein with an activator that may bind to the operator and activate its gene expression. So this is what we'll be working with in this example. So MATLAB has this great ordinary differential equation solver called ODE45 that solves differential equations for us. So do not worry about doing out all the math to uh, solve a differential equation. And we're going to plot our, um, our protein as a function of time. So the first thing we have to do is define all of our parameters. So these would be things that you would find from literature or you could find experimentally. So uh, we have our basal expression, A0 is 200, um, and the units are in the comments here. And our coefficient for regulated expression is A1, and that is 500. And our dissociation constant is 1,000. And our degradation coefficient is 0 0.01. So these are all the parameters we're going to need for our equation. Um, A is our protein of, uh, P is our protein of interest. And A is also something we have to provide. And that may be. Um, Oh, I don't know, 100 nanomolars. Concentration. All right, so now we need to have our initial condition. So when you solve a differential equation, uh, you may know that you have to have a set of initial conditions in order to solve the differential equation. So we will define it as just an array of one zero because we only have one protein of interest here and one differential equation. And we, we will just assume that there is no protein at time equals zero. So then we, are, we need to define our time span of interest. So I like to default to about two hours. So I'll put T end is equal to two in hours. I will comment in the units. And we need to define our actual T span with a initial and end time. So this would be T end times 60. And you have to be very careful to make sure that these units match up with the units you use for your parameters. So this is in minutes which is why I multiplied T end by 60. And let's not forget that semicolon there and there. And now we are actually going to call ODE45. So to call ODE45, it's going to output a T vector, T out, and an X vector, X out, which defines our output. And to call this function, you call ODE45, and then you create a little anonymous function at tx, which just denotes that your inputs are t and x. And you also have your, or your function that contains your differential equation. So I will make that in a second. I will call it gene expression ODE. And then I will leave this blank for now. And those are our input arguments for this differential equation. And we also need to put in our T span and our initial conditions in order for ODE45 to solve all of this. Okay, so now we need to make this function. So I'm going to make a new script and I'm going to name it exactly what I put in over there. So I'm gonna call it gene exp ODE, and I need to make sure that it's called that. So function gene exp, um, and I'm going to have an output type of dx dt ODE, and then I need to put in my input arguments. So these will be t and x because this is 
a differential equation solver. So I need to put in a t vector and an x vector. This solves the differential equation numerically. So I still need to have a t and an x. Uh, but don't worry about that. That is included in the ODE45 function. And I also need to include all of my parameters. Like for example, I need everything from this equation in here. Just going to comment that down below. So for example, I'm going to need alpha z not. I'm going to need alpha 1. I'm also going to need a, and I'm going to need kd and d and d. So in this case, dx dt is just, let's not forget the end. Every function needs to have an end. So dp dt, we're just going to call it dx in this case. Uh, forgive me if that's a little bit confusing, but this is exactly our differential equation that we need. So I'm just going to copy and paste this right in, except replace all instances of p with x, since this is the x that we are interested in. And then let's save that. And MATLAB needs this to be an array. So I'm actually going to make this an array of just one, since we have only one equation to worry about. All right. So now we have made our differential equation. And now we're going to go back and put in all of our input arguments. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste this and comment it right below so that I can have it for reference. And then delete it later. So I need to make sure I have my t, my x, a0, a1, a, k, d, and d. So Notice how this t and x come from here. So this is a function, not a value, being handed into ODE45, which is why you can do that. So if you're not sure, just copy and paste what I have here. Um, so this solves p. So if I want to plot p, then all I have to do is do figure to open a new figure. And then I have to just plot t out and x out. And that should give me a plot. Let's try this. I'll save it and then run. OK, great. So I got this nice plot here. As you can see, uh, the gene expression increases until eventually the rate of transcription is equal to the rate of degradation. So it eventually reaches a steady state. So this is good. And if I want to, in fact, increase, uh, tighten my window here, I can make my t end 1.5 instead so that I can get a closer look at the relationship as it's reaching its steady state. So I can run it again. And here I have a better view of the steady state. It looks like it's just below 2,500. Okay, so this was a tutorial on using the differential equations that we derive for genetic circuits, and I hope this was helpful.